All right, hey everybody, welcome back to the Introductory Astronomy Lab. This week for our second lab, we're gonna be going over parallax, and more specifically, stellar parallax. So first up, we wanna ask, what is parallax? Parallax is the apparent movement of objects based upon your point of view. A really quick experiment that you can do in order to see this is to hold out your finger, kind of straight out in front of your face, just like this, kind of alternate closing your right and left eye. You'll notice that your finger looks like it's shifting back and forth, but actually it's just you're changing in perspective between using each eye. Now what we want to do with this week's lab is we want to find out why parallax is so important to an astronomer. Now when physicists and astronomers, they use what's called stellar parallax in order to determine the distance between nearby stars or far away stars. Um, and how they do this, it's a pretty cool process. And what's the most interest, one of the most interesting things about it is that we're going to get to use the same exact techniques in this lab. All right, so first up, we're going to find out what stellar parallax is. So let's draw our solar system. So right here we have our sun. We'll just label that sun. And we have the Earth, right? And the Earth is going to rotate around the sun kind of like this depending on the time of year. Now let's say we have a nearby star. Let's say Alpha Centauri. It's all the way up here. And this physicist wants to figure out how far away Alpha Centauri is from the sun. Right? We want to find this distance. Now, how are we going to go about doing this? Well, we know the distance between the Earth and the Sun, which is about 1 AU, or approximately 150 million kilometers. All right, so we know that distance. We need one more piece of information. During the year the, when the Earth rotates around the Sun, Alpha Centauri over here is going to look like, from the Earth's perspective, that it kind of shifts between here and here. It's going to kind of rotate back and forth between those two points during the year. If we draw a line from Earth to one of the points where Alpha Centauri looks like it is from Earth's perspective, we can actually get this angle right here. All right? And that is our angle of parallax, or our parallax angle. And usually, those are measured in arc seconds, which is about one thirty-six hundred of a degree. All right, so how does that help us? How are we going to use this information in order to calculate this distance? Because that's what astronomers use parallax for. Well, if we kind of we kind of take this out, we can actually make a triangle. Gonna pull that triangle out, right? Just like that. And because arc seconds is a special kind of unit, astronomers have a specific formula for it that they can use to find the distance to the star, which is basically the distance to Alpha Centauri is equal to one over the, uh, the parallax angle. Now, in your pre-lab, you are given a, a question, and on the assessment, you're given a question where they give you this and they want you to find this. So basically you just plug in your parallax angle into there and you'll get the distance to the nearest star. And you should be looking for something of about four light years when you get your answer. Now back to our triangle, back to our triangle section. This is how it applies to us. The same techniques that they use to find the distance to stars, we can use to find the height of everyday objects. So we pull that triangle out, we have this angle right here, our parallax angle, and we have this distance here. We're going to call it Y for right now. We'll call this leg X and this leg R. All right, so now we need to introduce some trig functions. They're in your lab report, so if you go through, you'll see them. But there's three main ones that we can use for this lab. We have the sine of theta is equal to Y over R, the cosine of theta, is equal to x over r, and the tangent of theta is equal to y over x. 
we can use these three equations to calculate either y, r, x, or the angle. In this case, we're going to have the angle, and we're going to have the x distance, and that's going to allow us to calculate the height of various objects. Now I'm going to erase real fast right here. So in our lab, we're going to use these techniques to calculate the height of four different objects. Now, one of them is Laurel Hall. If you live further away, if you're kind of taking this class from afar, you can pick another building. Just make sure that it's a, it's a larger, kind of larger structure. But you want to pick four everyday objects. Now, they can be a light post, a tree, your house, anything you want. They should be about at least, say, six feet tall, and about you should stand about at least 10 to 15 feet away, because you want to get very accurate measurements. Now, how are we going to do that? Just like in our stellar parallax, we're going to set up a triangle. So let's say you're looking at a building, right? Let's draw like a house, okay? And here you are right here. What we're going to do is we're going to measure the distance from you to the house. We'll get x, and then we'll measure the angle between the ground and, say, some point on the building. Let's say right there, right where the roof meets the top of the building. We're going to get this angle, we'll call it theta, and then we're going to plug it in to one of our trig formulas. So, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and use tangent because we can find that height, or y, pretty much right away. So the tangent, or tangent of theta, is equal to y over x. Let's say we measured this to be 25 degrees, and we know x is 20 feet. Okay, we're going to plug that into here, so the tangent of 25 is equal to y over 20. Okay, solve for y by multiplying by 20 on both sides, and we get y is equal to 20, 10, 25. Now that's just an example, so I assume it's some value, close to 20 or so, um, but you just plug that into your calculator and you should be good to go. That's the basic setup that we're going to use for when we are uh, determining the height of these four objects. Now, in this lab, the lab requirements are listed in the lab, but there's only one piece from Galileo's bench that you're really going to need, and that is our handy-dandy protractor with the arm attached to it. All right? And how you're going to do, or how you're going to use this, um, is we're going to use this to determine the angle between the floor where we stand and the building that we're looking at. So what you want to do is you want to get back enough, or further back enough, so that you can get a very accurate measurement on the angle. And you want to take the protractor, hold it straight out, kind of move the arm up, and look down the arm until it lines up with the top of the building. So make sure it's flat here, and you can look down the protractor arm. And just for accuracy's sake, you want to kind of be between 10 and 30 degrees on your protractor. You never want to go too high and get too close and then be looking up kind of like that. And you never want to be so far away that it's just a little angle like that. All right? You're going to do that for four objects. In the assessment, there's a space for the angle that you measure, the distance from each angle, or the distance from each object that you are, the height that you calculate. And then there'll also be a section for um, what it would compare to in real life. How would those results actually compare? So, for instance, you know each house, If you, let's say you do your house, you know that the top from the ground to the top of your house, that's probably somewhere around 15 feet, say, if you have a one-story house. If you have a two-story house, that's going to be from the ground to the roof, maybe 25 feet. And just calculate your percent error between the value that you calculated and that assumed accurate measurement. In, the, in case of Laurel Hall, what you can do is Laurel Hall is about four stories high. So you can say, all right, Laurel Hall is about 40 feet. Get the number you calculated, and then compare those two. There's also going to be, on the assessment, some pre-lab questions where you have to calculate if you're given the, uh, the parallax angle in arc seconds. And just like the equation we had before, d is equal to 1 over rho, you have to calculate the distance. And a few other little questions about the lab that you will have to answer. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it for the Parallax Lab. 
Um, if you have any questions on the content, the requirements of the lab, or the assessment, feel free to email me, and uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. All right, thanks a lot, guys.